بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الشيطان الرجيم السلام عليكم my name is Sakina Sakina is my Muslim name um, I, my real name is Radha Ridi um, I'm from Tavua Fiji um, my background is somewhat like this I'm a, from a very religious Hindu family um, they were very strict and very religious in, in our religion um, Hinduism um, I got two sisters one brother um, when I was living in Fiji, I went to school, um, primary school, high school, studied school, worked and all that. Um, during my time when I was in Fiji, I was, you know, following what my family were following, what my mum and dad were following, which was the religion of Hinduism. Um, the funny thing about that was uh, mum and dad used to do their prayers on a Sunday. I used to do my prayer on a Monday and my sisters used to do um, their prayer on Friday. So it was like um, on a Monday, mum will cook. Uh, mum will cook vegetarian food for me, and then she'll cook something vegetarian on a Friday for my sisters, and then it was their Sunday vegetarian day. So I, I suppose pretty much from the beginning, I always thought, you know, there was a thing behind my mind: um, what are we doing, or why are we doing this way? And every time I ask my dad or my mum or you know or a pandit or someone. Um, what's this, why one person, you know, can eat on a Monday, uh, meet in another day, they can't sort of thing. And nobody really managed to give me a good answer or a solid answer to, you know, so the confusion um, was always there. Um, anyway, I mean, because mum and dad was following the religion, I was following the religion, um, I was pretty much doing exactly what they were doing. Um, and then I remember when I was in class eight and I was a head girl at that time, um, we had few Muslim girls in our classes and it was the time of Ramadan when they were fasting and it was, as in Fiji, it can get up to 40 degrees or so. It was very hot and the girls were sort of doing exactly what we were doing outside, exercising and cleaning, you know, picking up the rubbish, things like that. And I thought as a head girl, I, I think I should do a bit of... Um, a bit of research, you know, you know, why these girls are doing this and find out how I can help them, how I can support them. So I went and talked to them and they said, oh, this is our religion, this is what we're doing. And, it, and at that point it sort of, you know, clicked to me, oh, this, this is quite amazing, this is very interesting, you know, it like really amazed me that although it's so hot, um, how they're managing um, to do fasting from such, from, from, you know, in the morning to the afternoon. So as a joke, I said to them, inshallah, one day I will be a Muslim as well. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, if you need any assistance, any help, anything, you just feel free to come and talk to us. And then I thought, yeah, as if I will, you know. In, in very few simple words, um, I will describe myself before I was a Muslim, very arrogant. Um, I was very racist. Um, I used to absolutely hate Islam. And I, I will use the word hate because that was the extent of my feeling towards Islam um, and with Muslim people you know I always used to sort of see them as um, terrorist um, with a woman or a man and um, you know always sort of try to keep myself away from Muslim people um, we you know uh, the the village I'm from um, it's a very multicultural um, village you know we, we had Punjabis we had Muslims we had Fijians Hindu South Indians North, you know it was a, a bit of mixture and I used to sort of mingle with everyone except for Muslim people and, and then when I started going high school, you know, sort of started hanging out with, uh, with other colleagues, um, other um, schoolmates and all that, and we sort of started talking in groups like, you know, always some, we always had something bad to say about Islam or the people of Muslim. Um, and then one day I found out that my very close cousin, he's become a Muslim. And, and I, you know, I sort of thought like, oh, this, this is not good, this is not good, I must talk to this, you know, this cousin of mine and find out what's happening. Um, this, these people have done sort of jadu or something on him. And, and he, he tried to talk to me and he knew that, oh, no point talking to Sakina because she's not going to listen. And then after a few weeks later, I find out that he changed his name. He's become a Muslim and... And, and the main reason, I suppose, behind him becoming a Muslim was because he, he wanted to marry a Muslim girl. And before you can marry a Muslim girl, there was a thing that you have to become a Muslim. And then I said to my mom and dad, see, see, I, I told you these Muslim people, you know, they always want to convert people, they always want to follow, they always want you to follow their religion, they can't marry you because you're not a Muslim, you know, they always think we, we're not good enough for them. And it really, really annoyed me and made me very angry, you know. Um, 
So I completely stopped talking to my cousin. I said, okay, well, if you want to be a Muslim, you be a Muslim. You're not my cousin anymore. So my, my hatred towards Islam and Muslim people sort of grew from there. There were a lot of things in Hinduism which wasn't making sense to me. Um, first of all, of course, you know, you can only eat vegetarian on certain days. One person can eat on a Monday, one day, you know. Um, people were saying we're not allowed to eat beef um, or cow meat. Um, however, I was finding few Hindus eating beef. And I thought, hmm, do, are we allowed to, are we not allowed to? So I went to a Pujari and I asked him, you know, tell me where exactly in our books it says we can't. So he sort of gave me, uh, you know, some reasons and there were like too many reasons. And I thought, no, this can't be true. So I tried to read the books. However, um, I was told that, no, you can't touch the Ramayana, you can't touch the Gita. Um, and I thought, okay, all right, I have to respect that if they think that, you know, maybe women not allowed to touch, touch the book or we're not good enough to um, read um, one of these books. So I kind of left it there, but always uh, behind the back of my mind, you know, I always was unsure about the religion, but I was too scared to really go and question anyone. Um, my, I mean, I tried with my dad a few times, and my dad said, oh, you know, our forefathers followed it, we just follow it, you just do what I'm doing it, and then when you get married, you just follow your husband. And I thought, okay, okay, did no problem. Um, then I uh, met a few of my Fijian friends who were Christians. And really, I mean, I, I really started getting towards Christian, you know, something about Christianity. I think it was um, Jesus, the stories about Jesus, you know, um, how amazing he was, all the miracles he did and all that. And I thought, oh, there's something about this religion here. So I kind of... Um, moved towards Christianity and I started reading books, I started inviting Christian people, I sort of started um, going out with them and started um, learning a lot about Christianity. And for, for a while I was very happy with Christianity. I thought, um, I think the amazing story about Christianity was how they kept saying Jesus will come back, Jesus will come back, one day Jesus will come back. Um, I'm sort of a person I always like to debate, I always like to ask a lot of questions, I always want to know why, why, why. So the, the same problem started with Christianity as well. Um, they will give me an answer, but only to a certain extent, so they will never be able to give me full answer. So here I was a Hindu asking questions on Hinduism, couldn't get any further. Then I started on Christianity, I sort of got my answers, but the answers weren't good enough. So I moved to New Zealand and I started working and all that, started making new friends. They were friends from you know, all over the country. Um, and, and then I started doing full-time job um, at work and income. And um, the, the very amazing, one of the very amazing uh, Muslim converts I met, um, I will mention his name, um, Shane Hopkins. Um, people know him um, by the name of Yusuf. Um, he was a convert and he was following the religion, I think it was good seven, eight, ten years. Um, and he used to talk to me a lot about um, religion in, in, a, in whole. Um, because at the time I didn't know he was a Muslim. I thought, well, he's a Kiwi, he's a European, so obviously he's a Christian. So he used to ask me a lot of questions about my Hinduism. And although I didn't know much, I always pretended I knew everything. So we used to end up arguing all the time over uh, over the religion. Um, and then he started um, giving me people's email addresses, contact numbers, and he started telling me to visit these websites, you know, if you want to know more about um, the religion of Islam, you start um, doing your own research, don't listen to other people. Because I always had my own opinion about uh, the religion, you know, sort of like every religion, I always had my own opinion, especially, especially on Islam, you know, I always thought, it's one religion I will never follow. It's a, it's not a good religion. It's a really bad religion. They love killing people, and they, you know, they, yeah. So pretty much everything about Islam I didn't like. Um, and then I, um, I joined a couple of groups from all over the country and um, started asking questions online. So there was sort of like a debate session we were having online. Um, I used to uh, put a question out there to um, brothers and sisters of um, Islam, um, and they used to always always come back to me with an answer and it wasn't just you know one word answer one sentence answer it was always you know in, in full so my and so that at that point I was studying religion um, I was you know I wanted to know um, pretty much everything about all the religion um, the other religion which really struck me was um, the religion of Jewish people um, because I read a lot of stories about um, Prophet um, Moses uh, peace be upon him um, 
and yeah, so I started um, studying religion. Um, unlike maybe a lot of other converts, it took me nearly a good four or five years to finally accept um, the, the religion of Islam. I studied religion uh, for a good four or five years. Um, at a certain point I thought, yes, I'm, I'm ready to accept Islam, but then there was always that uncertainty, you know, I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure. Um, and then, um, there, then there was another thing that, what if I'm not going to be a good Muslim? What if, you know, if I accept Islam, but yet I won't be able to follow Islam? So there were a lot of questions coming to me. Um, and, and, and then I thought, well, I like the religion of Islam, but I don't like Muslim people. So how, how you know, what, what will happen? I don't want to be called Muslims. Um, I'm a Muslim um, because I don't like Muslim people. So there was another brother, uh, Brother James Butler, um, known as Salim. Um, he's another Kiwi convert. Um, I was introduced to him and he assisted me a lot with a lot of questions, a lot of research. Um, he gave me a lot of books. He gave me Quran to read. He was r very, very wonderful, alhamdulillah. Um, then I met a few other sisters from Malaysia, Sister Kazi, Sister um, Yati. So there were a group of people who were very, very much helping me and sort of un trying to answer um, every question I had. They were very patient with me. Um, I think I'm very sure at one point they must have given up on me and thought, nah, this, this, we're wasting our time. Um, you know, that she, will never, um, she will never become Muslim. Um, and, and, and one of the brothers always used to say to me, um, Sakina, look, if Allah wants you to become a Muslim, you will become a Muslim. If Allah is not going to choose you as one of, one of us, you will never become Muslim. And I said, you know, so, yeah, so it went on and on for a good four or five years. Um, I think um, what really, really um, assured me that, no, this is the religion is when I started watching a lot of DVDs. Um, I was watching um, uh, um, Brother Yusuf Estates from America, I think he is. Um, there was another brother, he's from England somewhere, I can't quite remember his name. Um, but the one person who absolutely amazed me, inspired me, is um, Dr. Zakir Naik. Um, he's, um, I think he's from India. Um, I used to watch his DVDs a lot, almost like three, four times a day. And just the way he used to talk, give a speech, the way he used to debate with people, it was just so wonderful. And he was so nice. And the way he, just his mannerism was just so amazing. And I thought, and you know, it really used to, um, it really used to excite me when he used to debate with like Hindu pundits, um, Christians, you know, Jewish people, especially the Hindu, when every time he, I used to watch the debate, Hinduism um, versus Islam debate. And I thought, yes, you know, here this is a man who got every answer. You know, there was, there was, um, in, for any question, he always had an answer. And it wasn't just an answer, you know, just like, oh, you know, we follow Islam because of the, there was always a depth of, um, of reasoning why we're we doing this, why we're we not doing this, why this is halal, why this is haram, things like that. So, uh, Dr. Zaki Naik, he really inspired me, and then, and then I started talking to my family, and my family thought, oh, um, where, where, is she, you know, where is she getting all this information from? Maybe she's um, with the wrong group of friends, you know, the reputation she's getting from the friends, it's not good, we must, we must, um, we must um, sort of, you know, take her back. So, but then they thought, well, you know, she's, she's very strong, and she got her, you know, she criticizes all the time, she got her own mind, so now she will never be, a, she will never become Muslim because she hates Islam so much. So they always knew now she won't do it. You know, she's just doing, she's going through that, that, that period where, you know, she's changing and all that. One day I said to my mom, mom, I think I'm ready. Um, I'm ready to accept this religion. And my mom said, are you absolutely sure? I said, yes, I'm absolutely sure. Mom said, why you want to become a Muslim? Is there a boy, you know, is there a Muslim boy um, in the story somewhere? Um, what's the story? Are you wanting to marry a Muslim man? I said, no, 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 mom, it's not that. It's totally, you know, it's it got nothing to do with my work or, or a guy or nothing, nothing like that. It's just what I studied, what I found out. I feel that Islam is the true religion. Uh, Islam has answered every question I had. I mean, in those debates, you know, every time I used to send a question to them, and I used to make it very, very difficult, you know, I used to say, make, make up stories, make up things, you know, that they won't be able to answer it. Yet, they always came back and they answered me. So I think finally I sort of, they 
So all my Muslim friends and the, the debate sessions I was having with all these people from all over the world, um, they sort of answered all the questions I had. Um, and I just had no other question to ask them. So in a way I was like totally lost. Um, and I thought, no, um, you know, there is something about this religion. I'm, I'm very educated, i got a good family, i got a good job, i got everything, um, yet there's something missing. There was always something missing, you know, even when I used to go to temple, do my puja and all that, you know. I always thought, well, this is just for a show to show people that, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of God and all that. And there was always something missing in life, always something missing, always, you know. I thought, i got everything, why, why do I feel like I'm incomplete, why do I feel like incomplete? So for good, from the age of 20 until 25, you know, the five years in between, um, there was something I felt, that, you know, there was missing in my life. And I was doing a lot of traveling, I was meeting a lot of people, you know, and everything was like going for me, yet I knew there was something incomplete in life. And at that point, um, I thought, no. If, if I know Islam is so good, Islam, Islam is the religion, why, why, am I, why am I still not, you know, why, why can't I do it? So one day I sat with a Muslim sister and I said to my sister, look, the real reason now is, what I'm thinking is if I do become a Muslim, what if I can't, if I can't do the prayer in Arabic because I knew the importance of um, Salat by that point. Um, you know, and I said, what if I can't do five times prayer? Because it all seemed like it's just too difficult, you know, uh, doing prayers five times a day, eating halal food, um, uh, Ramadan, all those sort of things sort of like scare me. It, it really scared me, you know. And then she said, um, Sakina, but you know, there are so many people out there, they're doing it and you don't have to straight away do it, you know, you take your time. We're not expecting you to learn everything all at once. And I said, no, but still, you know, I don't feel like I will be a good Muslim, you know, what if I do this, what if I do that, I like going out, you know, I like my KFC, things like that I used to say to her. She said, um, you know, th things will come all right, you take your time, you know, just you do when you're ready. The, what, the other good thing I, I will tell you about the Muslim friends I had was they never forced me. It took me five years, yet they were there, the sabr was always, you know, there, um, and I mean, if it was me, I would have said, you know, okay, if you want to become a Muslim, become a Muslim, otherwise, go, you know, just don't waste my time, sort of, that's sort of a person I am. Yet they were always there, and I thought, nah, I have to do this. So, that I converted here at Wellington uh, Masjid. Um, the day I came, my mother came with me, my sister came with me, and my niece came with me. I think... They came to support me, but at the same time, they really wanted to see, see if Radha will be able to do this. You know, she might change her mind. Um, in, from Lower Hutt coming to Wellington, they kept asking me over and over, are you sure, are you sure? And my dad was teasing me, my dad said, you know, you won't be able to come and eat at our place, you know, we'll be cooking nice food and all that. I think my mother was, my, my mother was very concerned because she thought, oh, my Betty won't be able to come and eat at our place, you know. I mean, she's already so skinny. Um, what, what will happen? And then she said, you know, you'll have to eat beef and all that. I said, Mom, no, I don't have to, but if I want to, I will eat beef, you know. It's not like you have to, just because you're Muslim, you don't have to eat beef. The great thing about my family was, especially my mum and dad, my sisters and my brother, they were very supportive, they were very understanding, um, although they de didn't believe that I will be able to cope with a new religion, I will be able to cope with Islam, but they were, they were with me all the time and they supported me absolutely 110%. So the support from my immediate family was absolutely amazing and was very good, alhamdulillah. But the support from my other families um, wasn't so good. Um, they still, I mean, it's been nearly two and a half years now. Um, this, this year will be my third Ramadan. Um, they still not very happy with me. Um, they still feel very uncomfortable with me. Um, my daddy, she's, you know, always asking, you know, what is this religion? What is this religion doing to you? Why are you this? You know, why are you doing this? Every time they see me going and doing my prayers on time, you know, things like that. I mean, they're happy. They're very proud that um, she's changed. You know, she's changed so much. Actually, she's much calmer. She's not fighting with everyone. Uh, she forgets and forgives people. She's helping always. You know. So, yeah, so the changes they see in me, it's, it's great, like they're really very happy and proud um, of me. But at the same time, there are certain families who are still not happy, 
um, they're still thinking, oh, you know, it's been two years, she will come back to us, she will, she will you know, to them, I'm not one of them anymore, um, I'm not a true Indian, um, I'm not a true South Indian to them. Um, there were a lot of friends who who were supporting me but it was just for a show. Um, I lost a lot of friends um, when I became Muslim but then there were a lot of friends who were still there and they, you know, I kept saying to them, you tell me, you know, just because I'm a Muslim, how have I changed? Uh, and then they'll say, oh, you don't talk much, you don't go out with us, you don't drink anymore, you know, you don't party anymore. And I said, but that's something I wanted to change um, in a very long time. You know, it's not just because I became a Muslim, because before I became a Muslim, uh, my, I started changing my lifestyle anyway. Um, I started only hanging out with good friends, you know, I stopped going out and I just didn't like the, the party environment where people were drinking alcohol, smoking, you know, it's sort of like really I wasn't very interested. Um, and then when, when I did become Muslim, it really helped me because not much changed by then. So I said to my friends, well, you know, whenever you guys invited me for a drink, I always said no before I became Muslim. So now I am a Muslim, so I'm saying the same thing. So I haven't changed much. So they tested me for a very long time. They tested me for a very long time. And same thing, my family tested me for a very long time. Um, I mean, it's a big thing when Diwali comes, you know, our, our, um, the puja and all that they usually have, um, the weddings and all that. So they will invite me, so I will go there as a respect, you know, I want to be with my family. So I'll go there, yet I'll make sure I don't touch, you know, the food which I'm not supposed to be eating. Um, I, I, I will, you know, keep myself away from doing their prayer and participating in their, you know. So they were watching me very closely and they were really, they were really watching me to sort of pick up on things and then sort of throw it back at me. So I was being very careful at the same time I, you know, I have to remind myself, well this is my family, I don't want to lose them, so I have to keep them happy. But at the same time I want them to understand why I am what I am today. Um, and, and one of the main reasons I wanted them to sort of come near Islam as well. So finally, I mean my mum and dad they know Islam is a true religion, they know in their heart that this is a very good religion, yet they can't really accept Islam because they're thinking what the community will say, what other families will say, you know, this is what we've been following for years and years, we must follow this. But I, but I know in my heart, they, they're really proud of me, they really want to, especially my mother, you know, she always says, oh, your Islam is so good, you know, you people, if you say you don't want to eat, um, eat um, haram food, you don't eat haram food. Because I have been with my family where, you know, it's like all haram food, um, the food is not halal. And I'm sitting there, you know, they're all eating, they're having a big feast, yet I'm sitting there like not bothered at all. And they'll watch me, they'll watch me and they keep saying, oh, you know, who cares, come and eat, you know. I said, yeah, yeah, no one's watching, but Allah's watching, you know. I'm not doing, I'm not doing this to make you happy or to make my Muslim friends happy, I'm doing this for Allah. So... Yeah, they, they tested me for a very long time. They're still testing me, um, but they, they're very supportive. They're very, very supportive. Um, I, I absolutely love doing my prayers, you know, five times prayers. If I miss a prayer or if I don't do my prayer in time, I always know, you know, I always feel like oh, something's missing. I've, I sort of feel very scared. My um, colleagues at work, they always teasing me about wearing hijab, you know. Oh, you know, why do you want to wear hijab? Why do you want to cover your body, you know? You, God made you to sort of um, show yourself, you know, you need to be attracted and all those sort of things, you know. And before I became Muslim, I used to think like that as well. But now, now that I'm a Muslim, just w dressing up like a Muslim woman, it just gives me that protection that, um, you know, it, it, it's like a respect thing really. What the respect I was getting from people before I was a Muslim and the respect I'm getting from people now becoming a Muslim, it's, there's a vast difference, absolutely. There's, I, I cannot um, describe in words um, the respect I'm getting now. Um, and I'll give you an example. I was traveling in train one day and I was wearing my hijab and the train was packed um, and the people sort of looked at me and I thought, oh my God, they must be thinking, who's this woman, you know, the, here comes a Muslim woman. And it was in New Zealand. But one of the men, he stood up and gave me a seat to sit down. Now, after a few days, I tried 
without wearing hijab, I tried the same thing. The train was packed and no one bothered to look at me, you know. So, yeah, that, that was a really good thing. And then sort of like I went out and I said to my friends, oh, wow, you know, wearing hijab. You know, the, the sort of um, response you get from people, it's not always bad. What I want to really say, um, just myself, uh, from, from a person who used to hate Islam, um, I will once again say the word hate, um, and look at me today, you know what I am today. My friends are just so, they were so, so, so shocked that the one person they thought who will never, never accept Islam or go anywhere near Islam, if she can do it, then I'm sure, um, you know, my non-Muslim friends um, out there, you can do it as well. The main thing is education. You must, you must educate yourself. You must learn about why, why are people committing suicide. I mean, I still question myself, you know, why we have all these suicidal bombings. Um, but if you actually, you know, really find out why they're doing it and stop listening to the media, stop watching what is shown on the TV, because that's the biggest problem. And I think that that's where I went wrong as well, because I started watching TV too much. I started listening to um, Americans, you know, these Christian people. Always, they all, because... I feel it's it's really nothing to do with the religion. It's more it's not it's very political, um, you know. So they sort of using the religion um, to have this um, war um, between the the Muslim people and non-Muslims. So to my brothers and sisters out there in Fiji, in New Zealand, um, in all over the country, really um, non-Muslims, my advice to you is: if you don't know something, um, you know. Go out and ask people, um, ask a Muslim person. And just not one Muslim pe person because I found a lot of time one, pe one Muslim person may say something and then you go and ask another Muslim person, they might, might say something else. So you must talk to um, the right person, you know, a person who knows about Islam, um, good scholars, um, internet is a good place um, if you want to know um, if you want to know things like why this, why that, um, what is Islam all about, um, internet is another good um, place to learn a lot about Islam. Um, in reading books, really, I mean, um, the best, the best thing I think is reading Quran. Um, reading Quran helped me more than reading anything or listening to anyone. You know, if I was unsure about something, I always. I always read Quran and of course understanding Quran is very difficult um, because it, to me it's like in a totally different language um, but then again if you break it down and you and you, you get it translated in your language or in, in a proper English then there's you know it's, it's, it's a very good yeah so really I would advise people to read Quran first of all before taking the religion of Islam before taking Muslim people I mean, really, I want to say if I can do it, and, and a lot of my friends out there, especially in Fiji, I mean, you know me, what sort of a person I was, you know. Um, I, I never liked changing. I, I didn't like changes in life. Um, I was a very strong following Hindu um, girl, um, you know, and if, if I can do it, I'm, I'm sure with the, with the right knowledge, you know, um, you will come to the path of Islam.